Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us today for Wellness Wednesday. I'm here today with Tori from Pinot's Palette. Tori is going to join us and paint a lovely sunflower design for you all. And I'm going to hand it over to Tori. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mary. Hi, everyone. Um, as she said, my name is Tori. It's right here on my apron in case we forget. Um, I'm here from Pinot's Palette to take a step-by-step -step through our lovely sunflower paintings. Uh, we have lots of options, which is great. Um, the supplies that we should have in front of us um, should be a water cup for our two brushes. We have two brushes for this painting today. Um, I have a little bit of paper towel, which I have anchored beneath my water cup as a little wet dry station for my brushes. Uh, feel free to take photos before, after, during. Um, it's Wellness Wednesday, yay! And you can always hashtag Pinot's Live if you are the social media type. We do um, have some paper plates so we can mix some colors. I'm going to go back to my brushes for a moment because we do have a flat brush and a round brush. Those brushes are going to live right here in my water cup. I've got my cute little 4x4 four four canvas. And we have several paint colors into our paint cups. I'm going to go ahead and take the lids off of my paint cups. Now, after we finish, you're more than welcome to keep the paint for any little craft or fun thing you want to do later. I, the brushes, all the supplies are yours to keep. So I'm just taking these off for the moment. All right. And since we do have, we should have two paper plates. Now, you are more than welcome to take your paint cup and dump it out on your plate, or you can keep them right there in the cups. Either way, it's up to you. I have two little examples here with us today. Of our nice sunflower with a kind of green background and a sunflower with just a plain white background, which I think looks nice and classy as well. So we definitely have options um, included in our paint cups. Um, the colors that we should have are black, white, blue, yellow, red, and brown. Um, so the red, yellow, and blue are our primary colors. With that, we can mix any color we want for our background. So before we start with our background, I do want to um, just kind of show us a couple of examples of different colors you can choose. If you do like your background to be white, I just recommend painting it white. It might seem silly, but it'll eliminate kind of the pores of the canvas that you can see, and it'll just look really nice. But I'm going to do a couple of color mixtures on here, so that way you have options. All right, let me get a little closer for us here. Now we're going to be doing our background with our flat brush, but for now, you can just watch and kind of see where I'm going with this. I'm going to show us how to do a couple of colors, and that first color is going to be pink, in which I would actually mix this color on my mixing plate. Now, when you're mixing colors, we don't want to paint the entire plate, right? We're just going to mix the color in one little spot or one little spot here and there. It's a small canvas, so we don't need very much paint either. But if I want to mix pink, I'm going to grab a scoop of white with my flat brush and then scrape it off. And I want to add a scoop of red. Now, keep in mind, if you do this and there's white paint on your brush and you dive into your red cup, go off to the side because the white paint on your brush will mix into this cup. So you don't want to go right in the middle and get white everywhere. Just come off to the side, take a scoop of that red, and I can stir it in with my white paint. Now the more red I add, the darker my pink will be. The more white I add, the lighter my pink will be. When you're mixing colors, you want to stir it kind of like you're mixing dough and you're kind of pushing it into itself, not spreading it all over the plate. And our white and red will give us a shade of pink. Voila. And I'll zoom in on these a little bit when we get to that point. When I clean my brush, say I don't want pink on my brush anymore, I want to pick up a new color. I'm going to dive right into my water cup. And I'm going to imagine like petting your dog, but you're doing that at the bottom of this cup. You can be a little aggressive with it, it will not hurt the brush. But adding a little pressure is going to flex your brushes so we get all that pink color out. And then I can give it a nice wipe on my paper towel. And if there's still paint on it, go back and do the same thing. Go in and make sure your brush is dry. If your brush is wet and you go and paint on your canvas, it's going to drip. So we want to make sure our brush is nice and dry. 
If I wanted to make a purple color, I would mix a scoop of white, a scoop of red, and a scoop of blue. Now white is just a nice base color. It'll give you a nice pastel look as well. The more red you add, you might get more of maybe a plum. The more blue might be a little more like a lavender color. So we have a nice kind of purple shade here. All right. I'm going to go back and clean my brush off. Next color example I'm going to mix, I will again start with a scoop of white. And then I'm going to add a scoop of blue. Once again, I want to dive to the side of my cup and not right into the center because now you can see there's white in my cup, but it's not contaminating my blue too much. And that's the goal. And if it's ever an issue, just clean your brush off before you go in to your next color. That way the white wouldn't have mixed with the blue. Trying to push that paint into itself. Stir it up until it's a solid color. And I have a nice kind of a light blue color. Ooh, kind of like a sky blue, very nice. Now when we're filling in our background, we want to keep in mind that we are painting our canvas as if we're painting the wall of our house. We want to spread it out flat. Any big lumps of paint are not going to dry, so we want to smooth it out like we're painting the walls of our house. Now I'm going to show us a shade of green, which I will start with a scoop of white. I'm going to grab a scoop of yellow, and I'll start with a small scoop of blue. I can always add more of my darker color. Stir it up until it is solid. I'm going to add a little more blue just because I like it. These are all customizable, so you can always play around on your plate and kind of see what different colors you get. You can always add a little bit more of this, a little bit more of that, and just to experiment, see what you like. Whenever you do decide on a background color to mix, you're going to want to mix enough of it that you won't run out, because if you have to mix a color a second time and it doesn't match, that can be a big bummer. But doing these colors gave me more of a sage green. And once again, I'll show you all these in just a moment. Always cleaning off and drying off my brush. If I want to make orange, I'll start, of course, with a scoop of white, a scoop of yellow, and a small little bit of red. Red and yellow make orange, and adding white is going to make it, like I said, a little more pastel. Um, you can always eliminate the white and just go yellow and red and see what that gets you. Doing this actually gave me a kind of peach color that I like. I think because I used a little bit less red. So let's see what it looks like if I stir in a little bit more red. Or a little more yellow it looks like. Painting is trial and error. You never know until you try. Everybody's hand moves differently. Everybody mixes their portions a little differently. See, doing that gave me a little bit more of an orange. No two paintings will ever turn out the same. My sunflower today will not match. I did both of these and they both look a little different, right? But that's okay, that's the fun about painting. If you are interested in making a gray background, I will start with a scoop of white and just a little bit of black. A little bit goes a very long way. You can always add more. It's very difficult to take away some of that dark color once we've gone a little too far. All right, so we have here a couple different color options for us. We have our white and red making pink, white, red, and blue making purple, white and blue to make our light blue, white, yellow, and a touch of blue to get our green, white and black to make gray, and white, yellow, and red. The first one made me kind of a peach color, and I added, I think, a little more yellow, which gave me more of an orange shade. Now, personally, I would not do orange just because it wouldn't contrast enough with our sunflower, which has oranges in it. Going with more of like a pink, a green, a blue, any of our kind of darker colors are something that I would recommend for your background, if not just a plain white, which is nice and classy, very pretty. But 
I'm going to leave this here for a moment as you decide on what background color you're going to do. You're going to use your flat brush for this, so we want to make sure our flat brush is dry, nice and dry on our paper towel. Now I think the color I'm going to choose, hmm, I might make some purple. But now let's take the next five minutes or so and fill in our entire canvas. Now, that being said, this canvas has edges. We have edges on all of our sides here. So you're welcome to, of course, paint the face of our canvas, but you're also welcome to paint the edges too. When you have it kind of propped up or hung up, it just looks really nice. It's a nice way to frame your work without actually putting a frame on it. So whatever color you decide, you can choose to paint all the showing canvas or just the face. Let's see, decisions, decisions. So you can go ahead and start coloring or mixing up your color. Remember to mix up enough to actually cover your canvas. I think I really like the purple. So we should have plenty of paint, so don't be shy about using the paint. If you ever at all hear a scratching noise on your canvas, that is a good indicator that there's not enough paint on your brush. Remember to push that paint into itself, stir it until it is one solid color. We want this to glide like butter on toast. So if it sounds a little rough, it's because we don't have quite enough paint. Now it's a flat brush, so I can go back and forth, back and forth, and really fill out this canvas. Because what we're gonna do is quickly fill in our background. Give it just a few minutes, because it should dry very quickly. We're using acrylic paint today, which is great because the paint dries so quickly. Now acrylic paint will stain your clothes. It will stain your couch. It will stain any fabrics. So you wanna be very careful not to uh, flick this all around your room. <laughs> Um, try your best not to get it on your sleeve. If you do catch a little bit of paint on your clothing, if you notice it right away while it's wet, go ahead and go to the sink with some soap and hot water and just apply and dab that to the spot that is on your clothing. And it should be fine, it should come out in the wash. If you get paint on yourself and you notice it at the end of this and it's already dry, that's your paint shirt for the next time we paint together. <laughs> No worries. Paint is definitely going to get on your hands. That's quite all right. If it gets in your hair for some reason, that will also wash right out. If you have a drink, we're going to try not to dip our brush into our drink. It's non-toxic, but I don't suspect it would taste very nice. So I'm pretty much finished covering my canvas. I'm painting my edges. I'm going to give us another minute or two. Ooh. Just making sure you were awake out there. I'm going to give it another minute or two just to make sure that we're all filled in. And remember, you want to spread that paint out flat so that it dries rather quickly. I can even hold it in the back with my two fingers if I'm worried about getting it on my hands, which I'm not because I know it washes right off. Looking good. I wonder what colors you chose. Hmm. I think the green looks really nice. Blue it would be a very pretty color too. Or I really like the classic kind of white background. But as I said, I recommend you paint your background white rather than leaving it white. But this is your world, as Bob Ross would say. So go with what you feel. Now while it's drying, you can hold it in your hand just as I am from the back of the frame, or you can set it flat on the table. It shouldn't take more than maybe five minutes for this to dry. And this is the background, so I'm not being particular, I'm just laying it all in, making sure I have covered all the white parts of my canvas. You can just set it down to dry. If you're a little heavy handed and you think, oh no, it's never going to dry. You can always take your extra paper plates and be your biggest fan. Just fan that off. Would definitely speed up the process. Uh, if you ever come to a Pinot's palette, we're located over there in Herndon. We have um, hair dryers in the studio that makes it so nice and easy. You just pick up your canvas, 
walk over and take a hair dryer. We have several people who have been painting from home and joining virtually, similar to what we're doing today. And they're all like, oh great, you know, I have a hair dryer in the other room. So it's a, a nice little cheap trick that we like to use to, to quickly dry stuff off. But it's not always necessary. You can tell your canvas is wet if it's still shiny. So if your canvas is shiny, it's still pretty wet. I just noticed a couple of white spots I didn't fill in, so I'm going to touch that up. This will make a cute little gift, something to put on your desk, um, set it up in your window. Holidays are coming up and there's nothing quite like a handmade gift. So maybe you have somebody in mind while you're painting it or something, a nice little treat for yourself. Now, as these dry, we can talk a little bit about what we'll be doing with our sunflower. And you can notice that I'm making a slight mess. <laughs> All right, we have two different examples here, one with a background color and one with a white background. Our white one is a little bit larger. It kind of goes almost all the way out to our edges. This one doesn't quite go all the way out, but you may notice also that our black outline is not, <laughs> is not on every single petal. We're gonna call that being artistic. We did not outline every single petal. It is implied that they're all petals, of course. And same for here, not every single petal has an outline. It's just a cute aesthetic, tiny little detail. And you can decide which is the top or the bottom of your flower. Now with painting, this is typically what we might do is we're gonna cover our background first, let that dry and then go into our details and put them on top rather than painting the sunflower and then trying to squeeze in and paint the background around it. Um, that can be a little tedious, troublesome. You might accidentally paint over top of your flower, which can be a big bummer. So that's why we're doing our background first. We're gonna go in with a light yellow and then do some highlights and some darker yellow. Then we'll come in with our big blobby sunflower. Now sunflowers, keep in mind, have a ton of petals, so many. They're kind of longer and thinner rather than your big kind of semi heart shaped petals you might do for a normal flower. Also, our center is quite big. Um, I have maybe two fingers above and below towards the edge of my canvas. So it takes up a good silver dollar type of size on this canvas. It's rather large. We'll dab some brown, black and touch it up with a tiny bit of white. And then we'll finish off by doing just kind of some vague outlines on a couple of our petals. So that's what we have to look forward to. We should be finishing up our backgrounds now, letting them dry. Mine's quite shiny still, so you can kind of see a little shiny there. You can tell those little spots that are wet. If you're feeling feisty, you can always shake that canvas, wave it around the air. <laughs> or as I said, this works as a nice little fan as well. Wellness Wednesday is such a great idea. There's nothing quite as therapeutic as sitting down and creating some art, especially painting. Lots of fun. Now for some of us type A's out there, there's no exact number of petals that we have. There's no exact color or place or thing that needs to happen on your canvas except for what you want to happen on this canvas. And I'm here to help you and we're going to go step by step. I'm going to give us just another minute or so. Mine's getting pretty dry. Maybe get that arm work out. Wave it. Wave it like you just don't care. Now I'm going to go back to, to the fan. Right? And as I said, if you have a hair dryer at home, super quick, gets the job done. It's really nice. Now say maybe you want to do something a little creative. You have that creative license, as we like to say, to kind of change things up. Um, if you want your sunflower to be like a pop art, maybe you want your flower um, to be blue, or you want your flower to be a bright red with just like a little bit of 
yellow. You can totally do that. You'll just, um, you know, kind of adjust what I'm doing and change it up and definitely do whatever you see is fit. If you'd rather there be a little ladybug on one of the petals of your flowers, that would be very cute. Definitely have options. You can make your flower a little smaller and then actually put a stem on your flower. Also look very nice. Now the harder you press your brush to that canvas, the bigger your flower is going to be, the bigger your lines are going to be. So I'm going to do a little practice example here on our canvas. We'll be using our flat brush to kind of, you know, fill in the petals. We're not going to use our small detail brush until we get to more of our details. So when it comes to our flat brush, I'll just show us an example while our canvas is dry. My brush is flat, which means if I want paint on this brush, I'm going to scrape it flat into my paint, whatever the color is, flip my brush over, scrape it flat. That way, my brush has a nice, sharp, flat edge. The shape of my brush is flat. There's no goops on it that are going to fly off, and there's even paint on both sides. Now, if I want to use the fan of my brush, which is typically you know, what most people know of the brush. That's what we use to fill in the background color. That is the flat sides of our brush, which there are two sides back and forth to kind of spread that paint around. I can also use what's called the blade of my brush. And doing that, I will definitely scrape my brush flat. And if you take a look at the tip of this brush, it looks just like an ice skate. That's the blade of the brush, the blade of a skate, the blade of your brush. And with that, it would touch directly to your canvas. That ice skate is touching your canvas the entire time. It doesn't lift up or tilt. And then you can get a really nice thin line. Now, it's just like an ice skate. So you can turn it in your fingertips and create some, you know, kind of thinner lines. Now, the harder I press, if I want to use the blade of my brush, the bigger my lines are going to be. So it's just a little, little note for as we continue on. Our detail brush is a little bit different because it's round. It doesn't have sides. So what I'll do if I want to pick up paint with this brush, I'm not going to stomp it right into my cup. I'm going to go kind of flat to my edge and give my brush a little twirl. Since it's round and it has round tip, give it a nice little twirl one direction. You should look at your brush and it still looks like it's at a nice point. And it's just like a pencil, so I'm going to hold it just like a pencil. The closer, the better. And you can be very gentle and get a nice detail line. Or you can press a little bit harder. And the more paint comes out, you get a little bit of a bigger line. So just a couple things to keep in mind. Of course, if I'm using one brush and you want to try using a different brush, go for it. These are your tools. So feel comfortable to so kind of experiment and see which brush works best for you. Now my canvas is dry to the touch, right? If you still need a minute or two, just kind of watch along as I um, go through the next few steps. But my canvas is dry 100%. The sides I'm not worried about, but the front, there's no purple, at least for my color. Now I'm gonna mix up my color to do the base of my sunflower. And what I'll be doing is cleaning off my flat brush, nice and clean. A little blue came out, so I'm going to clean it again, nice and dry. Now we want to take a big scoops. Now it's cheat day at Cold Stone and we want all the ice cream. Take this brush like a shovel. Scoop up a big scoop of white. Ooh, big scoop. Just for good measure, we're going to do two scoops of white. Ooh, sound effects help. It's been proven. Now I'm wiping off all the white that's on my brush and just scraping it onto my plate. And I'm going to add one scoop of yellow. Now you can go ahead and stir that up. It was once again, two scoops of white and one scoop of yellow. Remember to push that paint into itself. If you don't want to paint the plate, we're not going to go hang this up. So I'm pushing it, you should get a nice pale kind of canary yellow, I suppose. I'm stirring it up so it is a nice solid color. Right. So color I have right here, it's a very pale yellow mostly white. And the reason we're doing mostly white is because our backgrounds are not white. If we were to do just yellow by itself, it's a pretty thin color and we'd be able to see our background through it. So for our first layer, we're mixing white, 
so that the opacity is a little bit thicker and we won't be able to see our background color for the most part. Now what I'm going to do to start, we're going to come in a little closer, get rid of some of this clutter. So if we're doing our purple, what I'm going to do is kind of draw a rough kind of circle to indicate where my flower placement is. Right, so we can imagine that that might be the center part of our flower. Now I'm going to flatten my brush because what I'll be doing is using the blade of my brush, which means using that ice skate. And what I want to do is think about it like rays of sunshine. Use the blade and you're turning that brush. Lots of rays. If I need to go back and flatten my brush, they can be close together, far apart, touching. They can go off the edges of the canvas. There are no laws. We're lawless here. Just making rays of sunshine. The more the merrier. Kind of looks like a scary spider. Ooh. <laughs> now I don't need to color in the center because that's where my brown is going to go. So I'm not too concerned about that. And what I can do now is continuing using the blade of my brush. So I'm still using that ice skate part. I'm going to go in and start giving it some pressure. Right. Go back in, pick up some more paint, stick with the blade, give it some pressure. Right? We want our petals to be pointy at the tip, so I'm starting at the tip, and as I drag into my sunflower, give it some more pressure. And between each time, I'm going back into my yellow mixture, flattening my brush, going back, give it some pressure. Reload, flatten the brush. Now your petals are going to touch. It's a part of the same flower. It's okay. We're going to end up adding more anyway, and overlapping and making our flower nice and full. Now you can have this sitting on the table, or I find it easier to hold the canvas in your hand. Some petals might be a little shorter, some a little bit longer. And notice how I'm dragging my brush strokes right into the center of this. I'd rather us end up filling this in with yellow rather than leaving a big open gap that might be bigger than the brown that we're going to put there. So it's okay to kind of drag in a little bit. You can go right to the edge of that square. If you didn't put enough petals, you can always add one where there isn't one. Create your own petals. Now, if you'd like to try your detail brush, since it is similar to a pencil, feel free to give that a try. I'm a fan of the flat brush myself, which is why I'm using it. But you're more than welcome to experiment and try out your other brush. Continuing, moving on, keeping my petals at a point, and they get a little bit wider as we come into our flower there. Notice how it's covering up my purple pretty well. That's because we added that white paint. If you can see through yours a little bit, fear not. We're going to be layering a couple of colors on here, so eventually you should be able to kind of eliminate that background. And my flower's looking a little full over here and a little empty everywhere else, so I'm just going to go and create some petals wherever I see fit. Some flowers have a lot of petals, so I'm not being shy. I'll add as many as I'd like. Yeah, the more the merrier, right? <laughs> it's easy to get carried away having so much fun making these petals.
I think the hardest thing about painting is knowing when to stop. <laughs> I think mine looks pretty full. I'm borderlining a, uh, it's called dandelion. <laughs> what I'll do next is clean my brush off. Still have a good amount of white on my brush, so I'm cleaning that. We're next gonna go into just some straight yellow. Now I haven't been caking this on, it's pretty thin. Some of it is mostly dry. I'm going to continue with this brush and just pure yellow paint straight from my cup. And I can go in from my tip and pulling it in. And it's okay if I don't paint over every little spot. What I mean by that is if I have some of my light yellow petals showing and they aren't covered up with my pure yellow, no big deal. This will be kind of nice to see all of the different varieties and different shades of yellow that we can create. I'm going from my tip in towards my center. I really like this pretty deep yellow, kind of goldish yellow. So personally, I'm going to use a lot of it. Not a lot of paint per se, but the color itself I really like. So I might have only just a little bit of our light shade showing. For the most part, I'm going to cover most of this with our nice bright yellow. Now you want to be careful if you have areas that the paint is still wet. You can kind of see like spots like here where it looks a little dark. That's because I ripped up some paint from our first layer. I did not wait until it was dry. I'm going to be very gentle as I'm applying this paint. If I press hard, I do run the risk of tearing up the paint I just laid down. We're keeping it with nice thin layers so that they dry quickly. Nice gentle pressure as we're filling it in. And so that was two scoops of white and one scoop of yellow for my background or my um, first layer, base layer of my flower. Right now I'm using just pure yellow. You can notice how bright it is in comparison. You can always decide to do something funky with your background afterwards. Maybe put some polka dots or um, little bees flying around. Whatever tickles your fancy. Remember, if you need to do a little quick dry, you can use a hair dryer at home or paper fan man. Now, if you're at home thinking, that looks like a lion's mane, how are we going to turn that into a flower? You just wait, one step at a time. So mine's looking a little tacky, which means it's almost done drying. Still a little bit wet. I'll give it about another minute or so before I start putting on my next coat, which is gonna bring out those bright oranges kind of coming from the center of our flower. So we'll let that dry here for a moment.
can always give it a nice gentle touch test. Yep, so as we're continuing, that's what we want to be careful for is if we have anything that's very wet and then we don't wait for it to dry completely. If we start painting over it immediately, it might tear up some paint a little bit. But especially with something like a sunflower, it doesn't pose such a big deal. Don't worry about the center here. Of course, we're going to cover this up. Uh, but these little areas that are a little bit thinner, that adds to the dimension of our flower. So when it comes to flowers, things of that sort, it's not a huge worry for us. Mine's mostly dry, so I think we're ready for our next step. I'm going to continue with this blue brush. And I'm going to come in a little closer for this next step. What we'll be doing is we're going to mix an orange on our paper plate. I'm going to take a scoop of yellow, scrape it off, and just a poke right into my pile of red. Not necessarily a scoop, just a little dab. Red is a very strong color. In fact, when I mixed it up, it's still pretty red. So I'm going to add a little bit more yellow. So you only need a touch of red to your scoop of yellow. And I'll give you a nice golden orange color. Something like this, kind of orange. This was very red, so I just scooped over a little bit of the red and added more yellow to get my nice shade of orange. I will clean off this orange because the color we're going to start with is yellow, but we want to make sure our orange is ready. Okay, so we have our flower. My brush is dry. Now I'm going to go back with my yellow. For example, let's start maybe over here. I'm going to paint my petal or a couple petals in with yellow paint. And then what I'm going to do is dab a little bit into my orange paint. And I'm going to start from the center and gently flick outward. Now this is blending, so this only works on the spot where my yellow is fresh and wet. It's nice and smooth. And it's very subtle, so I might wipe off some of that orange, pick up yellow, go to my next little section. Make sure I'm getting definitely close to my center with this yellow. I can do a big chunk, maybe a quarter of my flower with this. Pick up a little bit of that orange, start from your center, and flick out. I'm not going all the way to the tip. I'm just flicking out towards my center. So again, I don't need to go all the way to the tips of my flower, but you do want to flick out from the center gently on the areas where you've already painted the yellow. So I'll wipe off any orange, pick up yellow. I'm gonna go over this chunk again with some yellow paint. And then pick up my orange, flicking out from the center, flick, 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 like you're sweeping. The end of my brush stroke is kind of lifting away. Do not press very hard, you can be nice and gentle. I'm using the flat part of my brush for this. And then flick, flick, flick. Now if you've decided to do a funky color, maybe like a red flower, you might do this step and maybe a pink or something fun, you know. You can always pick up some orange and maybe, maybe you do pick one or two petals to do the whole thing orange. I'm mostly focused on the center, not so much my tips, but you can do a couple tips orange just to mix it up a little bit. Why not? I'm kind of liking the way it's looking now. Just kind of randomly doing a petal or two here and there. 
Oh boy. Don't worry, only 20 steps to go. <laughs> Tori, you're so funny. Don't worry, we're almost finished. I'll give us a moment to finish uh, kind of flicking out those rays of sunshine, meaning that orange, kind of flicking it out from our center. Now we can definitely dive in and start focusing on the center of our flower. So we have a nice brown, nice big round circle in the center, about the size of a silver dollar. We've covered up most of it with this. So we can start small and kind of go and see how big we want to make those. We'll be doing this with our large brush as well. So I'm continuing with my flat brush. We'll come in a little close so we can see. I'm going to go right into my brown paint. Dab right into my center here. And I'm dabbing, I'm not painting. I'm dabbing because this is going to add to the texture of our flower. All right, so this might be just a little too small. We want nice, big middles of our sunflower. So I'm dabbing, dabbing. If my paint is still wet and it blends a little bit, that's okay. Just let it happen, it's natural, it's a sunflower. Sometimes there are little bits of yellow in the center. But I can use the flat side of my brush. I'm pretty much just stamping this color in circular motions, getting bigger and bigger. You can always rotate this in your hand if you prefer. Mine's looking like a square. I'm gonna try to make it a little more circular. Easier said than done, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. It's a flower, it's organic. Nice and big, huh? So I picked up a little bit of yellow, but it's no big deal. We want our center nice and big. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, so for comparison, if I put two fingers closed, two fingers closed, that's about as far away as I am from the edges of my canvas. So it's pretty nice and big, at least three of my closed fingers wide. Now I can immediately jump right into some black paint and we're gonna do the same motion. Dab, 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 dab. We're not going for a chocolate chip cookie. We want it to blend a little bit. Remember, you don't need a big blob of black paint. Sometimes less is more. You can always wipe it off. Pick up more brown if it becomes a little overbearing. But we just want little dabs of black mixed in with our brown. The last thing I'll do to our center is wipe off that dark color, go right into some white paint, and with just the tip of this brush, I might do just a couple little dabs. Maybe these are like the seeds reflecting in the sun. Little dabs for, of white into our center there. All right, this is where it really comes together. The moment we've all been waiting for, adding little details, those little accent outlines. Now, remember, it's easy to get carried away. We're not necessarily outlining every single petal. What I'm gonna do is put my large brush back into my water cup. I'm gonna be taking out my detail brush, which is my round brush. Now, this is gonna be with black paint. And remember what I said earlier about your pressure. If you press hard as you're drawing, your lines are gonna be big. We're gonna to try to go for some thinner lines here. Now, if we look at our examples, we have some spots that go all the way around this flower. We have this one that might be just the tip of it. This line is just kind of on the side. You know, they don't have to be around every single petal either. They don't have to go around the entire petal. So, it's a cute little something something. We are going to go in with some black paint which I will hold flat in the black and give my brush a nice little twirl. 
because I want my brush to be nice and thin. Not super overloaded and my brush is very pointy. Now I'm going to accomplish nothing holding my brush like a magic wand. I know painting is magical, but to have the most control, we're gonna hold it just like a pencil. Now my canvas for the most part is dry, so I can lean my hand on it if I need to. My center is still very wet, so I'm gonna be careful of that. What I like to do is start from the tip and work my way in and then just kind of manipulate the canvas, rotating it as I go. So don't hold your breath. <laughs> it's very easy to do. The best way to get some, a steady hand is to do your brush stroke on a breath out. So if you take a deep breath in on your breath out, something like that. Go back and reload your brush, gentle pressure. And we can take our time kind of going around doing these little sketchy outlines here and there. If we have some lines that get a little bit thicker, no big deal. If we end up outlining every single petal, no big deal. When you go and hang these up, nobody's gonna walk in and go, wrong, you outlined every petal. They're gonna be admiring the hard work you did. It's very beautiful. So I might do just a little bit. I'm being very gentle. I'm using just the very tip of my brush. I was pressing a little harder here, which is why my line ended up so big. But again, no big deal. I got a couple of big ones and a couple of thin lines. So it looks kind of intentional, right? Still working, going around. I like to do maybe just the point at some of them. Mm. Coming together. Lots of petals, so we have lots of work. <laughs> Oh, wow. Well, that turned out nice, didn't it? Lovely. Oh yeah, there we go. That little angle shows the nice colors. Nice job. Now we would definitely love to see your, your final products. Um, if you are on social media and you want to do a hashtag Pinos Live for our Wellness Wednesday, feel free to do that. But this was great. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Thank you for painting with me. Tori, thank you so much. That was fantastic. I can't wait to see everyone's creations. And please join us next Wednesday, October 21st, for our offering of guided meditation at 11 a.m. Thank you.